All right, so today we're going to be reassembling a Antminer S19 XP um, hash board. Um, this is a repaired board, so it's been tested and is ready to be reassembled. We got our unit shell. I'm only going to be demonstrating one board, so there's um, some screws in there for the other two boards. Um, we got our thermal compound. We have our screws and our container. And of course, can't forget the ESD strap. So I'm going to put that on right now. Get that on. All right. Oh, and of course, your electronic screwdriver. So initially, you want to do is you want to get a little droplet or a dab, if you may, of this thermal compound on each of the ASICs. So we have 110. So we're going to do 110 little dabs on top of the surface of the ASIC. Like we can go, you can stay in a domain if you want, you know, um, but it can be out of order. You can go up, down, whatever you're comfortable with, but put a little, so you just want to, and you want to make sure you put enough. Like uh, it's might be a little heavy, you know, um, next one, we'll just do like a little less, something like that is acceptable you know this uh this stuff is fairly expensive but you want to make sure you get it, have enough on there i like that amount for you know um proper thermal cooling we're going to keep doing this for each asic so i'm not gonna you know take up more of your time but you get the gist you can go by domain like i said um just a little dab for each one try not to get it on the um the ic's but yeah, if these are significant, this one might be a little bit more, but just take your time. You'll get faster at it as you get better at this. But you want to go each domain, 110 ASICs, just like this, glob it. And then we'll move on to securing the back heat sinks with thermal compound. All right, as you can see, we have 110 ASICs covered in thermal compound for the entire board. It's better to be a little heavy handed with this thermal compound than to be light. Um, you want it to cover the entire ASIC, but it's okay. Once the heat sink comes down, it's gonna compress it. And you know, more is better, um, but not too much. Um, this is about the right amount you want but you don't want to overdo it and you don't want to underdo it. All right, so next in the reassembly process of this S19 XP is to cover each one of these bottom heat sinks with thermal compound. Um, you can line them up um, the way they're supposed to go. Not really uh, important right now for the alignment, but we're gonna cover, you see there's like little groups here. It's the ones that are raised is you want to put a streak of thermal compound. This one, this one, and this one. So there's four. So you just want to take your thermal compound and a nice line down it. Like so. There. And you can kind of spread it with the tip. It will get a little gunky, so you're going to need a paper towel sometimes. So just wipe that off. That's kind of a waste, but it will give you better um, application if you um, keep it clean. So you want to do these for each one. So the next thing you want to do once you apply the thermal compound streaks to these back heat sinks is you want to um, align them. So you get the small, the large, and another small. But the most important thing is that, you see this little hole here? Yeah, that requires a screw. So you want that oriented um, if you have the hash board IO section in the left um, top um, section. So this is the tricky part. Because this is, you know, obviously it's going to be a little slippery. Um, we have our ASICs covered in thermal compound. 
but we want to line it up as best as possible. This might take a couple attempts at your first try, um, but you want to be able to see the screw hole when you line these up. So it's important to line it up properly. And like I said, it will take a couple attempts, but it's not really going to go anywhere, that thermal compound. But personally, I like to do it this way. We have the small rectangular heat sink in the back and then the large one in the middle. So we can now take the large heat sinks. Um, if you can see, you want to see, you know, the black in that screw hole and make sure it's perfectly lined up. You can kind of move it. It's lucid. So once you have that nice and lined up, we can attach the top heat sinks. Okay, so this is our first top heat sink. It's, um, uh, I believe this is 16 screws. Yeah. So I like to think of it as the big boy on the bottom for this unit. Um, so this is the most important. You want to line up those screw holes as much as best possibly you can when you come down on this. Um, so I like to take my time when I'm coming down, especially when there's ASICs involved. And you just want to center those uh, you can see it goes all the way through. Hopefully you can see in there it's perfectly lined up. It might be, you know, have to move it around a little bit. You can use the bottom. Um, I prefer. Um, that's usually what doesn't line up right. So kind of like move the board into place. You want to see those screw holes directly, you know, down into the bottom um, heat sinks. So now that we have this on, we're going to set our other large heat sink aside for the moment because I have to put on this back heat sink still to make that um, reattach properly. So um, I like to do it in sections. So, you know, there's two top heat sinks. So we want to get this one secure first. So we're going to take our screws and then we're going to place it in a kind of a zigzag. I like to do it, it applies uniform pressure. And this heat sink gets um, um, screwed back in. Um, but, you know, whatever method works for you. Um, if you're a beginner, you can just go straight across, you know. But I like to apply um, even pressure um, when I'm uh, reattaching these hash boards. All right, so I've realigned this. And we're going to do like a zigzag pattern. Um, you can even, I like to come, well, more diagonal. And then down, and then... Um, but um, this is just preference. Um, it helps keep the pressure uniform. So put this down, apply a little pressure downward for this first two. Some people even like to switch, you know, on the opposite side, you know, get this one in place. Because, you know, once that one's in place, they're all going to kind of fall in line. Um, but yeah, I like to do this method. Kind of safeguards your ASICs. Here's another tricky moment. You got the bottom heat sink with the thermal compound. We got our bottom uh, top heat sink in the back. Good to go. So you want to line this one up um, to secure that second top heat sink. But you just want to make sure to line it up properly, just like the others. Place it down. Screw holes look good. Take our second top heat sink. And we're going to line that up as well. Make sure to look at the holes um, so you don't make any mistakes. So we're going to line it up. Hopefully you guys can see. And then go down. Looks good. Okay. Now that one's in place. We're going to put our screws in. Drop them down. So these are all the, um, um, for the hash board and, um, yeah, there's three. Okay. Yeah. These are for the unit shell. So, and this is for the power terminal. So we'll keep those in there. Okay. And we're going to screw these in. Same kind of, uh, idea. Just 
jump over to here. Okay. Like I said, uh, in the uh, our training guide, we kind of you know random with this, but the idea is to provide that uniform pressure. And they'll drop in for you. But now you know that you know that hashboard isn't going anywhere. All right, we're lined up perfectly. And we're good to go. So now we've secured the heat sinks. We got the top and the bottom thermal compound, and sometimes what happens, you gotta like clean it up a little bit. Um, I'm actually gonna get some Kintip wipes because that's just a regular paper towel, but just wipe the skunk off, clean her up. It should be um, ready for um, mining operation, um, and this will help uh, dissipate the heat away from our ASICs. All right, so everything is secure. We got our top heat sinks, two of them, and we got our bottom three heat sinks. Cleaned it up with some IPA. Just that excessive thermal compound that um, got on the sides, um, but it looks good. So I'll show you how to reintegrate this into the unit shell. Take our reassembled hash board, just like we took it out. Uh, two on the bottom, there's slits, and then one being the spot to slide it in. And that should just slide nice and easy in. And of course, you want to. Um, um, reattach the data cable. I like to do the, once I have all three in, um, get it on these power terminals. So I'll do those six screws. And then of course, um, reattach the data cables for each hash board. Um, and then we'll take our control panel top cover, slide that back in. Once I have the fan and everything, um, it'll actually be this way, but so that will all go in that. Boom, come down. And you got yourself a reassembled miner. Um, make sure to check all screws. Um, I didn't really show you that um, on the back of the hash board, just in case one of them came loose. There are some screws. Um, take this out. Uh, what I'm talking about is these guys. Let me see if I can tighten these up. You know, you can do even like a hand. You don't have to activate it. Just check if they're tight. All these screws here. And even check that guy as well, and then reintegrate it. But that's how you uh, reassemble a S19 XP um, hash boards back into the unit shell. Hopefully, this was helpful. We hope you found this content helpful. If you did, please consider sharing and liking this video to help train and support our industry. Your engagement helps us reach more technicians, enthusiasts, ensuring the valuable knowledge is spread throughout the community. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more upcoming content where we'll continue to provide in-depth demonstrations and insights into the ASIC repair and diagnostic industry. Thank you for watching and happy repairing. May your repairs be swift and your mining profitable.